Alright, hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to the second video of the data structure series. Today we're going to be taking a look at hash tables. So what is a hash table? A hash table is a data structure that consists of a collection of unique key value pairs. And each possible key appears at most once in the collection. What is hashing? So a given key is hashed through a hash function. The hash function computes an index into an array from which the desired value can be found. Um, and it's important to note there's a whole variety of hash functions that can be used in hash tables. Um, for the examples that we're going to be going through, we're just going to be using the mod function to keep things simple. Um, with that being said, it's important to also note that hash functions are not perfect which means that they can return the same index for multiple keys, resulting in what's known as a hash collision. All right, so let's walk through um, sort of an example of how hashing works. As you can see, we have our hash table. Uh, we have the array that the hash table maps to, and we have the hash function that will take a key and return an index to map our value into the array. Um, for the sake of simplicity, I've just used the mod operator for our hash function. Um, just wanted to note that in actual hash tables, uh, more complex functions, more complex hash functions are used um, in order to avoid hash collisions. Um, but just for this, for the simplicity of this demo, we'll just use the mod uh, operator. So let's say I wanted to insert a key value pair with the key of one and a value of the string red. If I were to do one mod three like that, I would get one. And so now we know we need to put the value red at index one. And then say for our next key, I want to do two with a value of blue. And if we plug that into our hash function, we get two mod three which gives us two. So we put blue at index two. And then for the third one, let's say I wanted to map key three to a value of green. So you do three mod three, and that gives us zero. Now let's say I wanted to insert a fourth value with the number four for the key and the string purple. So if we do four mod three, we get a one. However, if you look, one, the one slot is already taken. And what we've just run into is a hash collision. Um, and so that's what we're gonna be getting into next, uh, which are basically two of the main collision resolution methods that are used to solve this sort of problem um, when it comes to hashing. So there are two collision resolution methods that we're going to be going over today. Uh, the first one is called separate chaining. In separate chaining, each bucket consists of linked list nodes. And if multiple given keys correspond to the same bucket, or in other words, a hash collision occurs for a specific key, the values can be chained onto the linked list for that bucket. So basically, instead of a key corresponding to a specific value, it actually corresponds to the head of a linked list. The second collision resolution method is called open addressing. If the bucket corresponding to a given key is filled, the rest of the buckets are traversed until an empty bucket is found to place the value in. So basically, as we showed earlier, hash maps really map values into an array. And so all open addressing does is when it gets the index of the array for a given key and it finds that that specific slot is already filled, it basically just through some other function finds the next empty slot and places the value there. Now, what are these functions? There's a 
a variety of different functions. The one we'll go over today is simply called uh, linear probing, in which it quite literally linearly traverses the array until it finds the next empty slot. But obviously there's a bunch of other different ways to go about um, open addressing. Um, if you guys are interested in that, you can definitely go ahead and look that up as well. All right, so let's walk through a drawing of what the two collision resolution methods sort of look like. Let's start with separate chaining. So as you can see, I sort of just redrew the array. This, this, um, this, these boxes here on the right are is still the array. I just redrew it vertically for visual purposes. Um, so we sort of left off uh, where we were when we had the key of four um, and encountered the hash collision with index one, right? Uh, so the way separate chaining works, again, as explained earlier, is each index or each slot of the array pretty much just maps to a linked list. So what's going to happen here is we're simply just going to attach a node because this red, this red here, and this green and this blue, these are all linked list nodes. So all we're going to do is we're going to chain the purple on as the next node, as the uh, node that the value of red or the node that contains the value of red points to. Um, and you'll see as we add on more values, as the hash collisions keep happening, all we will end up doing is just sort of chaining them like this. We chain and then it'll add on more um, continuously like that. All right, so let's sort of walk through what open addressing looks like. So if you remember what we said for open addressing was that if we find a, if we run into a hash collision and we find that a given slot in the array is full, all we're going to do is traverse uh, the array in some fashion uh, until we find the next available slot that we can store our value in. Uh, now there's different methods for traversing this array. Um, the one that we're going to use is called linear probing and which we simply traverse the array in a linear fashion um, in order to find the next open slot. So remember we did four mod three and we got the index one resulting in a hash collision here. Um, so what we're going to do, what this, what the linear probing is going to do is essentially just, we're going to check the next slot over see is this slot full well yeah it has blue in it and we're going to check the next slot over after that and say is this one full um no it's not full this one is empty so we can actually now store the value of purple in here um and that's pretty much what open addressing looks like um and again what we use to find the next empty slot is called uh, linear probing all right, so here are the common hash table operations. We have insert, update, delete, and get. Um, as you can see in the table, the average runtime for all of these operations is constant. Um, given that all of the keys are unique, all we have to do is simply pass the key through a hash function, which would usually compute an index in constant time. Um, However, in the worst case, we have a linear runtime because like, as you can see, if we get a collision, if we get a hash collision, um, like an open addressing, we would potentially have to scan through the entire array that the hash table maps to in order to find the next empty slot to store a given value. All right. So that pretty much wraps up the basics of hash tables. Um, now we're going to go ahead and get into some code. All right, guys. So here in the code, we have initialized a hash table followed by our four basic hash table operations. So the first thing we do after we initialize the hash table is we insert an element to the hash table uh, just by saying hash table uh, index four. It looks similar to indexing an array, but this four just represents the key and we set the value equal to orange. Um, now it's worth noting that if this key already exists, 
um, in the hash table. It's just all it's going to do is just pretty much update the um, the key value pair in the hash table. Um, and then the second operation, we are getting an element from the hash table just by using the get method. Um, we want to get the value corresponding to the key of two. Um, and if that key doesn't exist in the hash table, we're going to return a default value of purple. And then the third operation, we're just updating. So as you can see, it looks similar to the insert, um, except that this one key already exists. So it's going to end up overwriting that red string with the value of yellow. And then the last operation, we're simply just deleting a uh, key value pair from the hash table um, just with the delete keyword. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just run the script and there's our output. So we see we have the initial hash table here. We've inserted the key value pair for map to orange and then we get the value that maps to the key two, which is blue. And then we update the um, key value pair, the key of one in the hash table. We set red to yellow, and then we finally delete um, the key value pair of one in yellow from our hash table. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much the code. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. Um, and again, as always, if there is anything I may have missed or any feedback or, you know, anything you might want to say regarding the video or the topic or just anything pretty much in general, feel free to leave a comment, um, in the comments section. I'll definitely be sure to uh, look out for those. Um, and thank you guys for watching.